Welcome back to Sumster Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today I'm going to play Stellar Monarch 2. Now this is a Forex strategy games, and recently on this channel I have played some strat grand strategy games or Forex strategy games that are kind of like a simplified idea of what the normal Forex strategy game is. This is not that kind of game. This is a Forex strategy game with a big X. <laughs> <laughs> this game does not pull any punches. It's very complex. Do my best to walk you through it. Let's go. Now we're gonna be playing on the enlightened ruler because we just want to have it as <laughs> simplified as possible. We will be playing on a small galaxy nation size and we'll be playing with the basic settings for like young and old empire. The idea with this game is that you're gonna be uh, taking control of one of the noble house and you're gonna be you have to uh, handle a lot of diplomacy with the other noble houses and you'll also be fighting aliens. Uh, you can create a dynasty or do a quick start. Uh, I let's the dynasty I get. So our royal house name is going to be Rudian. Rudy Anne. After one of my patrons, Rudy. My emperor, emperor name is Rudy. Rudy Rudian. And he's the emperor who is middle aged. And well, this is a good look. We'll keep it. And then perks. So the perks are pretty cool because they allow you to affect the games quite significantly. So if we could get reforms making faster. So reforms are ways to do like a session acts. This is actually really cool. This is actually real strong. Also, sociology technologies level one. Ooh, this is also very strong. So these perks are like real big. So we're gonna take that on as well. We have one point left, so we can be wealthy or we can be tax collectors. So we can either start with extra money in our treasury, which is pretty cool because there's certain things where you can sort of appoint ministers or or like people in the courts to higher level, and for that you can use your own money if you don't want to use the money of your country. Or we can just be better at getting taxes. So obviously we're gonna be better at taking taxes. Like why? Would you use your own money when you don't have to <laughs> so this all of the blue thing here that's all mine the capital city of my kingdom this is a turn-based game by the way is called terra uh, you can rename it so i'm gonna say that this is going to be the planet of vas after another one of my patrons so we've got vas our, our capital in in the rudian uh, kingdom or monarch and then here you can see a couple of information so here you can see the raw food harvest and the raw minerals extraction this is going to affect raw minerals manufacturing and raw food your food here you can see how many uh, the the triangles which we are making 40,133 which is a huge amount is economic output and you don't actually see it up here in your resources but it does affect things like manufacturing and taxes so this essentially affects how much tax you get you can also here see different like extra information like what kind of sun and moon there is and like communication range and etc we don't need to worry about it it's just extra stuff you can learn what's important is loyalty and security of the planet so your the loyalty is determining how many rebels you have rebels are a pretty big deal in the game because uh, uh you'll probably have like some rebellions especially in your beginning playthrough so you want to make sure that your rebels are low you also want to make sure that you keep your corruption low because if you have high corruption you're going to be losing out a lot of money security is dependent on the number of loyal or suppressed people that you have versus rebel supporters here are the sort of emperor, so that's me or the Erudian, and the governor of this particular um, like area or, or empire. And you can see they have these different values. So, so for the governor, they have, and this is common for most uh, characters in this game, they will have competence, loyalty, and charisma. So competence affects how good they are in whatever it is that they're doing. So, for example, high com and, and the competence is like generally don't have like specific competence. For example, for putting some making someone be like a general versus making someone a minister, like the competence just like the same. Uh, here you have loyalty, so how likely they are to betray you, and then you have charisma, which will determine happiness bonus from the government and also personal charm. So this can affect certain things uh, based on like where you put them. Um, here what you can do is you can claim and unclaim a planet this is pretty important so on the capital it's not particularly relevant but later on you might be able to do combat which is what we will do very early on because i want to show you how the combat in this game works and for that you have to first claim a planet so that your military knows that they want to go and take it 
We also have colonies. So here, Dualdia is a colony here. And you can see that it has Tomas for as the governor. It has an okay loyalty and security. And you can see that this would give me 43 instead of shippers return to food and for her. And I can make it a core planet. Uh, there are a couple things to relation in core world. First of all, if you lose a core world, you will lose stability. Stability is a big part of the game because if your stability gets to zero, it's game over. Also, uh, in order to win this game, you need to fulfill these goals. And uh, big, like you have to have 15 of, of these goals. You can pick any any 15 here. And stability is like three of those. So we definitely want to have high stability. So what I can do is I can pay my resource, specifically the administrative points resource, to make this a core planet, core world of mine, which will give it certain benefits. But uh, it will also make it so that if I lose this planet, it's going to be really uh, bad for me. As opposed, if I just lose this as a colony, then it's not really a big deal. There are also some other uh, important cities here, like specifically, I think this is a meg megalopolis. So this will provide extra bon bonuses to the neighboring planets just because it's a mega megalopolis. Okay. So this is our, our, our little, everything blue is ours. Okay. Let's talk about resources next. So here you have centralization. Uh, this is how, how centralized your power is. The higher it gets, the more power the emperor and emperor institution have compared to noble houses. So we are, I'm the emperor, obviously. Uh, and you have multiple noble houses. You also have a noble house that you belong to. And you uh, can play this game in a way that you try to make every noble house happy. Or what actually the manual recommends is that you pick a few noble houses that you just don't care about. You can see the noble houses here. So you might think, okay, I don't like House Winter and I don't like House Garrison. Every time they ask you something, it'll be just like, no, I do not care. Because it can be quite difficult to keep it uh, high. However, a good way to deal with noble houses is if you have, uh, and this is the my, my no, noble house that I belong to, there are seven of them total. If you have a very negative, if you're at a war with them, you can marry off a person from your house to them to stop the war. And they will always say yes, because they want to marry into the royal house, the one that's in power. Well, I mean, they're most likely to say yes. Maybe it's a better thing to say. So resources. Then we've got uh, stability. We talked about it already. Rebels, they're going to try to overthrow you. So we got to then either like push it down the military or make sure the rebels. So a good way to stop the rebels is through Ministry of Justice. We'll talk about that soon. Population. So populations, you have uh, Terrans, which are your normal citizens, humans. And then you have alien humanoids. And then you could also have robots and androids later, which are kind of servants. Uh, humans eat the most food then aliens and then robots don't eat food so um it's kind of like the more aliens you have the better but uh also the humans are the most productive so the humans eat more but are more productive and then aliens kind of like depend on <laughs> Other humanoid races are granted resident status since we are a civilized empire and we do not look down on inferior beings. <laughs> I love that. We do not look down on inferior beings. I <laughs> think about that. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> Clearly we look down on, on beautiful aliens. <laughs> I'll go in. Oh, look, I am laughing, but I'll go at war with aliens imminently. So it's like, I, don't, I can't tell much. Uh, so happiness, self-explanatory, imperial treasury, my money. And then here, this is important. These are the focus points and administrative points and legislation points. And we can use them to do different things. So emperor's points are like, uh, but we don't have to go over what does what. But the point is you need to use these points to do stuff. All right, empire. In two turns, we'll go to an audience. This is important because we'll get to talk to different like people in your court and ministry. Here are all the people in your courts. Here they have their stats. What's also important are these different perks that they have. For example, this this woman is from a rich family, which and I love what that means. She takes third of the usual salary. What kind of rich people live in this world? <laughs> She's like, I'm rich. I I'm, I'm no money. No money for me. Give it to the poor. 
<laughs> These are very, very kind rich people. All right, uh, and she's also easygoing and cheerful. So this is going to give a bonus to competence. So this is the competence we talked about. You can go here and look at your ministries. And this is really, in ooh, oh my God. Look at Samuel Gonzalez. This is, mm, this is the best person ever. Also, he's rich, but this is like, oh my God. This is like bow down before you even see him. 95% chance of a good event related to Ministry of Justice. This is amazing. And he lowers my corruption by 15%. On the other hand, Angelina over here is kind of rubbish. She's courageous and reckless, but she ain't super great. So her competence is low. So we want to find someone with a better competence. We want to kick her out. So we can also click, so we can make expand the minister's offices. This will increase the effectiveness of the treasury. We can transfer her to another ministry if we wanted to, so we could click, but this would cost us some money. Transferring is actually fairly easy because it doesn't cost much. So if you wanted to fire her, it would cost you 200 administrative points that I don't have. There is, however, a trick where you can go to the court and you can find someone who's like like Adrian here who is extremely competent and you can say hey Adrian I want you to be a minister and it only costs you a hundred oh I can't do that because you're already an advisor oh but he's so good yeah how about you Matthias. Matthias is a professional workout, so he lowers the bureaucracy upkeep. That's actually really good. And he increases his charisma if he is a minister. So we'll take him and we'll make him a minister. But it costs me 300. It costs me so much because he's not so... Um, actually, no, I think it costs 300. Yeah, it costs 300 for everybody unless they're already in a higher position. This last ministry protocol is irrelevant and it's a good way to sort of kick people out. So uh, first of all, I, what I could do, I could just move this guy to the uh, treasury to make it so that he is, because he has higher competence than she does. And he actually has a 19, 19 competence, so we might do that. Alternatively, we could just wait and try to get uh, Matthias to get the position. But I, I think we'll just grab Leon here. Um, now one thing you want to keep in mind is like what noble house they're in also. So just keep that in mind. Let's, we'll move him to the treasury. So she has 47, 53% chance and 973. And you can see he's giving me double the money and much better efficiency. So you always want to make sure you have the best possible people in positions because it makes a huge difference. Also in the internal affairs, I could lower my rebels by getting someone who is better than 14 competent. So that's something we want to wait for future turns. All right, but now we got to move on because otherwise it's going to be a super long video. So you already went through uh, the noble houses. Here we have the great council. We can call on favors here with different um, houses if we needed to. So if we sort of, we can uh, make sure that they, uh, we can call a gathering and then sort of call up on a favor if we need to. Next, finances. So finances, you can pick how you want to set up your taxes. So the, here you can see your basic income and then tax efficiency is going to be 70%. And then we would have to do some reforms to get it higher. Then we see effective tax, trade, extra income, and corruption takes the money away. So you want to have corruption low. And then here you can see your expensive and then total how much you gain per turn. I can change this to high taxes, but obviously people will be less happy. And you can also increase like industry and commerce taxes, which lowers the happiness. Actually, this lowers this plus eight and this goes plus 10. So actually this would be better. Oh, aristocracy tax. Ooh, but each noble has a chance to get lower opinion on me. So that's actually, I might do that anyway. That's actually not too bad. Here you can allocate your budget points. So you can choose how much you want to put into army, fleet, administration, science. So for example, if we know that we are going to do war, we might say we want to put less into imperial palace, but focus more in the army. Here, yes, you can see your trade. So you can see your trade pioneers, trade efficiency, and this. And then this is the thief's income. So how much you're making uh, from the different, uh, like you can see the treasuries of the different houses, their wealth and etc. And how much you're making here from the full economic di directorate. 
okay next up we've got research so research you can assign what research you want to focus on the most currently we're focusing most on electronics which is kind of interesting let's see what we could get here we could get uh city cyber major so this would increase the base city's output of economic uh points more this is actually kind of great mainly because we have a lot of cities so this would increase our economic output a lot which will make manufacturing a lot easier and you want to pick something for every one of these areas but the the, the manual actually tells you that most of the time you will be focusing mostly on one of these trees and on the rest you'll just get a little bit you can like completely turn this away you have to have at least one but this is go going to take a lot longer than some of the other ones for example i might get minerals refining efficiency increase but you can see it only get 26 per turn so this will take me around 20 turns to get there as opposed to this which will only take me 10 turns biochemistry would take loyalty checks all new courtiers start with loyalty plus one and are gener guaranteed to start with at least five loyalty and i think we'll take food con con conservation instead and in sociology we actually have a lot of stuff research so like food storage better weapons special units i would like to focus on city services again just to increase my uh my city production and finally we'll take theory in <laughs> in energy just to begin so actually because we're doing so well in sociology we can take a point away and put it more into energy to make sure that everything is doing a bit better and here you can see your overall bonuses all around now, I know this has take a while. We haven't gone through the first turn. Actually, you know what? Let's do industry in the next turn. Aliens and military. So let's just jump to the end of the first turn. And now we'll go to industry. Now, nothing happened yet because it's one more turn until we get like audience and etc. Here you can see our economy. So you can see the economy points, manufacturing capacity, number of cities, agriculture. This is important. We're not making as much food as we need. So we need to either to get to 10,000 money to invest in better food processing. And with manufacturing, we're actually doing pretty good. You can see the rare resources you have and the happiness from luxury resources and projects. So here we could start a project. For example, we could start a propaganda center to increase loyalty on our planet or industrial complex, which will increase the base output of cities and manufacturing or law enforcement agents, which will increase security. So we'll do this do law enforcement. And you can also boost it with your personal money. Here are the aliens. It's important to know what aliens you're at war with. So we are at war with Arachnids. I'm not going to click on it because I don't want to see them. But we're also at war with the Hive. And no, no. <laughs> of course I clicked on it accidentally. <laughs> Slags, Cyber March, and Megatron. So first, I need to see where we can start a war. So we're going to look down here. Ooh. Okay, so we could colonize this pond because there's no one there, but I actually really want to start a war. I don't just want to colonize. So who owns this? Talmak. We are at peace with the Palmak, so that ain't gonna work. What about you? Oh, the slugs. We shall fight the slugs. Also, this is a lot of food and I want my food. So the first thing you gotta do, you gotta go to intelligence. And you can set up, uh, we can see the espionage and the mass orders of the plant and how so sort of like the overview or what I like. Uh, they have 137 planets. That's quite a lot of planets. So they might be kind of strong. But I think let's try it anyway. So here. Where, where is it? This is a city of mine. Ooh, is it? Can I not do it because it's not a core world? Okay, so what you can normally do is you can click on it and you can say oh yes okay we, so okay so we did this so we claimed this planet you can click on like claim all the planets of this um uh, of this like um species mm, mm, like automatically but i think it might uh, it doesn't i can't click on it right now and i think here with the diplomacy no okay so for some reason i can't click on it right now i believe it's because this is not a core world and uh, the the claiming only works on on uh, if it's adjacent to a core world of mine i believe i'm not 100 percent certain of that so uh, so we we okay let, let me see if i have a core world somewhere that's adjacent to an enemy uh, where, where do we have any more enemies? 
There are no enemies around me in this game. In my test game, I had like enemies that were like immediately around. But this time, it's like no. You know what? Doesn't matter. We'll just do it like here. So we claim this planet, and because we are at war with them, our military is going to start moving here. So I can increase. The, I'm gonna say high priority. I really want to take over this. And here, this is a strategic weapon of mass destruction. So I could also drop bombs. Not yet. We have to be at war with them. And here is like the offensive power difference. So this, when we're launching offenses, it it affects like how extra we want to go. Like how my, how strong you want to be when we go at them. If you want to be kind of a lot, but we, we're gonna leave it the way it is. Now here, I can click on my military. You can see the the staff that you have in the in the command, and you can see what kind of thing that they specialize in. So like, um, for example, this Michael King gets a bonus versus aliens, and yeah, gives them different bonuses. Here. You can order versus target alien or race, so we can say that we want to focus a lot of our power at the slugs, because we're currently at war with them. Here we can see the crew for different ships, so we could, if we had enough money, we could do a space academy, which would increase the quality and quantity of our crews. And here you can see that like 42% of our people are green, some are regular, some are veterans, and you can see the general crew quality. And then here you can see I have currently two nuclear weapons, two biochemical weapons, and two strategic missiles. And I could produce an extra one, but it cost me a lot of money. Here you can see my fleets. So we can um, uh, sort of set up in what sector which fleet is working on. And we could also try to change some of these people. For example, this guy doesn't have a super, Lucas doesn't have a super high competence, so we might want to try to, you know, take somebody else and make them, uh, we can, we can like kick him out or we can put someone else in the position. Here you can see our squadron, so we, which one you have available, and you can do a battle simulation, which will compare how would it uh, do against other enemies. And you can click, for example, like on this squadron, and I can, um, See like what kind of ships it have and etc. If you research a better a ship or things like that, then they will be building the the better option. Uh, also, I could here buy. Uh, this is. Yeah. So here, for example, you can see there's a blueprint for space mouse, but it's not ready to for production because we have to promote it to a prototype first. So what I could do if I really want this space mouse ship, I can promote it to a pro prototype if I had. Uh, like enough promotion points, which I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure how you get promotion. Oh, and maybe I need to mark it as obsolete so that I can gain different points. But you could also do different like modernization on these different ships, and you can also mark something as favorite. Oh, it, it doesn't do anything. Okay, it would like something tutorial that you can. Oh, I have to do a new squadron design. Okay, so here you can do a new design. So you can pick a new weapon and then you can say that you want to assign this. We are fine with the with the weight of this and we can change some of these. Like, for example, I want to use the, the mini Hydra instead of the Falcon. And I want to use, like, the Assault Hydra instead of the Guardian, etc. And then we could do the battle si simulation to compare it against something else. So we could just do a quick result. So 69% that we would win. And uh, then we can um, sort of like save it if you wanted to, but we, I don't think we need to do that. Yeah. Actually, I think we saved it. It's going to start in one turn production. And here, like I said, we, here we have the ships. Okay. So let's uh, end our turn and we're going to check how, okay, so here, there's now a battle in progress. So here you can see the defensive installation. They have 16 uh, defensive installations out of 20. Uh, we have two fleets here, one with strength of 23 and the other with strength of 31. And strategic reserves of 41 and total 100. Uh, I think it's like, like our, our attack power. And they have 13 um, is their defensive power. So it's, it's we're, we're going to win this. But they have more ground forces. They have thirty-six, and we only have eleven. So our power, uh, so our power is eleven on the ground forces, and there is forty-three. But we're doing better on ships. 
And, and right now, I could actually drop a nuclear weapon here. It will kill a lot of people. We're gonna do... Well, let's do... Yeah, let's drop a nuclear weapon just so we can shut it down. <laughs> this is so... We're kind of dark. Now we should... Okay, we're gonna have audiences here. So audiences give us different... Ooh, we get an alien ambassador. Different events that we can do in this game. So we're just gonna start with the alien. This filthy envoy from Atarian Sleek says they want to start a war with us. Really? Be like us. And we're fighting the slugs. We can say sure. Or we can negotiate, which would cost me... No, I don't want to spend that many points and that much money. Yeah, I'll fine. I'll start a war with you. Huh. Alright, it's fine. Oh, Minister of Justice, Samuel, what do you want? My leash. We discovered that several governors were transferring planetary funds to their personal pockets. How should we treat them? They shall be replaced. Oh! Ooh, that sounds actually... Each governor who's corrupted trade has 50% chance to be fired. Do I have any governor that has corrupted traits? Or, or maybe... It, it, does it count for courts as well? I, I think it might. For example, like this guy. Thomas King should be kicked out. Okay, there are quite a few. Yeah, let's do it. That's a great deal for me. Oh, let's make an example. We do not tolerate corruption. So each governor who has corrupted trade has a 70% chance to be fired, but each governor that has a 30% chance for a lowered loyalty. Or we can make them pay a fine and get a lot of money. <laughs> I think they deserve the extra money for the undying loyalty to me. <laughs> uh, let's do, let's make an example. We don't, corruption's bad. We need to get rid of, 27% of our people are rebels. That's really bad. Like, we, we gotta show them, like, no, no rebellions here. We don't do rebels. <laughs> Event scientists, what do you want? An independent scientist, totally mad, I must add, is invented in his secret laboratory a substance with mysterious properties. We are unable to produce some more of it or decipher the notes of the inventor who, as I mentioned already, is mad and can be reasoned with right now. Now, we ended up with a small quantity of the substance and dilemma is how to use it. We can study it to give us 300 in biochemistry. Yes, give it to me. I need points in biochemistry. Director of the Fidel the Economic Director gathers to discuss issuing new shares. They're just going to say, uh, sure, we'll base it on it. Doesn't matter. Here, we can see, okay, so this, uh, we can do like a noble alliance with different houses. So to increase our opinion of them, and this would also potentially could give us some extra favor. So we can say, we gain political agenda with this. And with the other houses, you can see their authority and monarchism. So authority is how others see the noble house. And monarchism is uh, how they view the house under like monarchy, federalism and aristocracy. Ooh, it's like an extension of our traditional privileges. Okay. This will increase their authority and their opinion of me. And I would also gain favor, but it costs me a lot of points. But I think having the favor would actually be pretty good. <laughs> there was an accident. Yacht full of noble born collided with the passenger liner, resulting in the incineration. Oh, oh, that's dark. I, th I thought this was going to go elsewhere. <laughs> I, I was laughing because it was like an accident with the yacht. I thought it was, they were like, oh, we lost the cool yacht. But actually, this is pretty bad. All the nobles survived. Of course, they did. And I'm guessing the other people does not. Yeah. People are mad. Uh, so we can lower the authority of this house by by putting it, blaming it on someone, or on both of them. And we can also say no one's fault, or we can um, focus on compensating the victim. But it costs me a lot of money that I do not have. It will give me a lot of favor. So we'll say they're both to blame, and etc. And you can see that how you can do these sort of different things. And over time, you'll be able to take control. I don't think we'll be able to do it next time. Yeah. We're still winning, but we can't take over this and turn. Actually, if I if I try to just quickly, yeah, okay. So this turn, we actually now own this, so we can encourage colonization. So we have uh, 
our colonization ship, we have only one total, is going to try to move here and colonize this place. Again, if I can jump to the next turn, this is going to take a few turns to get there. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, write it down in the comments, and you can click on the right towards some other games that we play on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye-bye.